This is Jewish Spotlight, a weekly television program presented by Chabad Lubavitch of Long Island, featuring various aspects of modern Jewish life and Jewish culture. Now, here is your host, Rabbi Tuvia Teldin. Shalom. We find ourselves now during the very auspicious days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. We've brought the year into a new year. We have a new experience of time. We've connected to God. Perhaps we've been in synagogue on Rosh Hashanah. We've heard the prayers. We've poured out our heart to say to God that we want you to be God again for us on the personal level. And we want to connect to that spiritual level so that we can, as Jews, really feel connected to our people and connected to God and hope and pray that God will bless us with a healthy year. But we're approaching now a very special day, the day of Yom Kippur, a very holy day, the holiest day of the Jewish year a day of atonement, a day where there's an aura about that day that we need to be an active participant in creating that aura, of trying to make preparations for that day, of asking for forgiveness from our fellow man, of asking for forgiveness from God, and making sure that we come into the day with a clean slate, hopefully able to stand before God and say we are ready to begin a new year with God's blessings in a very, very positive way. But with all the preparations that we're going to make during these next days, we're also going to be counting on that experience in the synagogue. The chazan, the cantor, the rabbi, to be able to create that aura, to help us have that electricity, to feel that there's something going on in that room that inspires us to want to connect even deeper than we have, let's say, the days before Yom Kippur. And the, of course, the role of the chazan, of the cantor, is very, very crucial to creating that aura, to inspiring us, uh, us to want to connect. So we have with us today somebody very, very special. So our honor to have with us a cantor, cantor Joseph Malavani, who is going to be able to share with us some of the very special meanings of Yom Kippur. Cantor Malavani is a cantor at the prestigious Fifth Avenue Synagogue in Manhattan, has traveled literally around the world, has performed before presidents and vice presidents, before kings and queens, and has really had an incredible life using the gift of his voice to help fellow Jews and non-Jews alike to be inspired to come closer to God. Cantor Malavani, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure, and I'm really excited and looking forward to looking into a little bit more of how you, as a Hazen, as such a famous cantor, would like to share with us the experience of Yom Kippur. What is that experience? What does it mean to you? How do you, how do you communicate that meaning to people when you're in the front of the sanctuary and you're trying to lead the, the congregation in prayer to God? What thoughts go through your mind at that time? Look. The main idea that goes between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is, of course, the idea of teshuva, of repentance, of asking for forgiveness. This is a period of the year where, which is very hard, of course, for the cantor himself, because we sing a lot. Yes. There are many, many prayers in the synagogue on Rosh Hashanah and, of course, on Yom Kippur. It has a psychological meaning because, as you know, on Yom Kippur we fast. We are told in the Torah that you have to fast me'erev ad erev, from the evening until the evening. And we interpret it as fasting for about 25 hours. Just thinking that I, as the chazan, as the cantor, have to fast. I cannot have water to drink. Forget about eating. That's not important. <laughs> right. The throat gets dry. Yes. And I have to sing for hours and hours and hours. Quite just a challenge. thinking about it, it is a tremendous challenge. Just thinking about it before makes you very, very serious. I think you should go home now and start resting. Well, <laughs> it's okay. We still uh, uh, oh, soon, soon. <laughs> now, the prayers themselves are so meaningful, so beautiful. You know, you walk into the synagogue, the only night of the year when we everybody puts on the talis, the talit. Usually we do not put on talit at night, but on Kol Nidre night we do. 
we dress up with white because white is a symbol of purity. And we have to become pure. And through the purity to become sincere in our quest uh, for a better year. And so we walk into the synagogue. Everybody puts on the talis. Everybody puts on a kittle, maybe. You know, this is a beautiful white gown. And we are waiting for the ark to open. And the Torah is being brought out. Some synagogue, you bring out one Torah. Some synagogue, we bring out all the Torah scrolls. And they all surround me. And then we have a Beth Din. We have a Jewish court consisting of the rabbi, myself, and maybe, and of course, another two, another person, at least three we have to have, where the first item of the agenda is with God's agreement and with the community's agreement, we pray, we are allowed to pray together with people who are sinners because everybody is a sinner. We know there is a pasuk, ki ein tzadik ba'aret asher tov velo yecheta. There is no righteous person on earth who does not do good and sinneth not. And so we come before God as pure as we can. And there are certain, I so this is the first item. Then we have the most beautiful prayer that is called Kol Nidre. Mm -hmm. I remember my late father talking always about Kol Nidre in the shtetl. Everybody ran to the synagogue quickly because they had to hear the Everybody Chazan sing the sure. Kol Nidre. The and we sing it three prayer. times. Mm -hmm. We sing it three times. What's interesting about it is the, first of all, let's talk about the, the, the text itself. Mm -hmm. We really annul all our vows. Kol nidre ve'esare v'charamei. All the things that we have taken upon ourselves during the year are annulled. Mm -hmm. They are void. So that we can go into the day of atonement with a clean slate. Precisely. So actually, the text, if we look at the text, it's just a legal document. Right. Now, look what's going on. The music of Kol Nidre is precisely the contrast to the uh, philosophical meaning of, of Kol Nidre. In what sense? Because Kol Nidre is very sad. I'm talking about the music. Yes. Very sad, unique. The motifs of Kol Nidre. Kol Nidre now, the melody, the melody is about five, six hundred years old only. Really? The text is older. How old is the text? The text, I think, comes from almost from Talmudic period. And perhaps. And when the, the people used to say it, or it was inserted into the Mahzor, into the prayer book, much later, maybe about five, six, seven hundred years ago. Now, how do you sing, how do you put into music a legal document? There is no way of doing it. So the, the best thing to do is to create the motifs that will set the mood of Yom Kippur, this mood of, of, of begging, sadness, trying to get closer to God, asking, to go, asking God to forgive us. And the, the, uh, the connection becomes very interesting. And let me, if I may, Please. spend another two sentences. A few months ago, we had the holiday of Shavuot, Pentecost. There is a beautiful poem on Shavuot that not every synagogue sings. Not every canto sings. Some of the synagogues do away with. I do it. And here is what they say. Th it says, As 
ושלושה מצוות. Here are the 613 commandments. פירוש עונשן ומתן שכרן. The meaning of the punishment and the reward. And I remember, if I may dwell for a minute, when I was confronted with it the first time when I was a cancer in London, I didn't know how to chant it because I never sang it before. Growing up in Israel, we never did. And so I checked in the book and I found that you sing it, you chant it, like Kol Nidre. Az sheish meyot u'shelosh esrei mitzvot Peirush onishan u'matan sechoron And then I began to ask myself, what is the connection between the melody of right. Kol Nidre that we are used to and a poem for the holiday of Shavuot. And when I saw the words Peirush Onshan, Sachar Onesh, reward and punishment, then I understood. Is, is it not the whole idea of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, reward and punishment? Isn't God sitting on his throne deciding you will be rewarded you will, God forbid, be punished. And so the melody is connected, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Shavuot. And so Kol Nidre, the melody has become universal. Everywhere you sing the same melody. You know, I have a, a very beautiful memory um, the, that was when I was in Moscow the first time, singing the Tchaikovsky Hall with the Moscow Philharmonic Orchestra. I don't know, 20 pieces of music. I finished those 20 pieces of music and I was worn out, giving all my neshome out, all my soul. And somebody from the hall, that was 1989, shouted, Kol Nidre! And I said to myself, God <laughs> Almighty, <laughs> how do they know about Kol Nidre? Really? And so I found out that the Jews of Moscow, Kol Nidre night, everybody, even in the time of the communists, came to the synagogue. And they also go on, they used to go on Simchat Torah. Now, of course, they are free to go. And I said, God, I have to sing it. I have no music for the orchestra. Nothing was rehearsed. I did not have a machzor in front of me, the prayer book. But, you know, I've been a chazan for a couple of years, and I know by heart the prayer. I stood up. I got the orchestra to be quiet. I just asked them to give me a, a chord. For those of you who know music, A minor chord. And I started singing Kol Nidre for them. No accompaniment. Kol Nidre Ve'yesor And I gave my heart out that, I must tell you again, I broke down in the middle. Really? I cried. I really cried. I collected myself and I continued. And when I finished, Ushvasana Lashemu There was a thunder there, as if to say, we are demonstrating to the authorities. You people kept us away from our tradition for so many years. Mm -hmm. But Kol Nidre, we know, we remember it because Girsa de Yankusa, we heard it as little children. And you actually young. touched the spark within every single one of the Jews who was witnessing that. I to hope show that so. that spark was still alive even though they'd been through years of communism. I must tell you that I have students, not only in the Moscow school, but who came to the Bell School of Jewish Music where I am a distinguished professor. Guys from Moscow who told me that that Kol Nidre 
switched on something in them, so and they decided to become religious very people. Very nice. I think we have a tape also, I believe, of you performing in Krakow. Yes, in a Krakow synagogue, in a Krakow right. temple, with the Moscow choir, the Moscow with Melbourne the choir, choir, the choir. Very nice. The, the, it's called the Hasidic Kapella, and uh, we are singing the Kol Nidre. Okay, let's cut to that tape, because I think that will give people a little bit of a feeling for getting into the mood of, of Yom Kippur. Very much And so. a little bit of hearing your voice as well. Very much okay, so. Okay, let's cut to that tape and see it.
was wonderful. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say that the choral arrangement is by a young uh, South African Jewish uh, gentleman by the name of Leo Himmelstein, and the conductor is somebody whom we discovered in Moscow and fell into Jewish music, really? Sasha, Sasha Tsaliuk. Very nice. No, I wanted to ask you, Kent, there is a beautiful prayer that, for, for me personally, yes. expresses a lot of the meaning of Yom Kippur. Yes. It's a prayer which just communicates to me the, the, the temporary nature of life, the fact that when we're honest with ourselves, that our lives are really not totally in our control. It's a prayer called Kihine Kochome. I'll give the translation of one stanza just to give you an idea. The first stanza says, Indeed, as the clay in the hand of the molder, who when he wishes expands it and when he wishes contracts it, so are we in your hand, O you who remember deeds of loving kindness. Look to the covenant and do not regard our evil inclination. And the tune is just beautiful. I know it's just a, such a, a striking tune and it just communicates this sense of, of the, the awe of the day. You see, Kol Nidre and I, these, we have a few poems that we sing only once a year on Kol Nidre night. And so the melodies have to be easy but beautiful. Right. Should not be cheap. Here is the way I sing. Oh. In my synagogue, Great. and the whole congregation sings along. I was hoping along. you would volunteer. Ki hine kachomer beyad ayotzer birtsoso marchiv uvirtsoso mekatzer keinanach nu veyadecha. Said an altar, Laberisa bait, Laberisa bait, they all a tefenela yet. You come to my congregation. I died, I died, I died, I died, I I da da, I da da da, I da I da I da I da I da da I da da. I love it. I love it. And the whole congregation. I have a choir of six hundred people singing. We have such a loud choir like that. That's great. Beautiful. All right, now everybody goes home. We go to sleep. We rest up. We know that the next day we have a a long day ahead of us. We wake up. We daven shacharis, the morning services. We have the reading of the Torah, special reading course. Anya and Kippur talking about the activities of the Kohen, the Kohen Gadol, and of course what we went on in the temple during Yom Kippur. Very, very special. Then we go into the Musaf and the Avodah. The Avodah is a very, very special part, which unfortunately a lot of people don't stay for. But it's really, I think it's a very important part of the prayer because it gives us a, a sense of the history of the day and the, the importance Precisely. of the day itself. Can you tell us just quickly a little bit about the Avodah itself? Well, what we are trying to do, what I try to do for the music, is to reenact this dramatic moment when the um, high priest, the Kohen Gadol, went into the Holy of Holies and when he pronounced the proper name of God and that's when God communicated with him and he communicated with God. He was there on his own. Right. And then he used to come out. There are laws how the Kohen had to be dressed and uh, what kind of garments he used to. Now, can you imagine thousands upon thousands upon thousands in the in the holy temple in Jerusalem sure and there is a beautiful motif that belongs only to this prayer no other time during the year they are koyanim motif belong only at that and we s by the way we say it three times and that goes back thousands of years no thousands upon thousands and what I do is what the Kohen Gadol did and the congregation join joins with me I fall as we call fall koirim I fall all the way to the floor right. spread myself the same way as the high priest did when he kneeled mm -hmm. towards God Interesting. now 
We don't have so much time, but I want to jump to the end of Yom yeah. Kippur, to the Nila prayer, which is the closing of the gates. We've already done everything we can in order to pour out our heart to God, <coughs> tell God that we want to return, we want to have start the year with a clean slate, we want to have those blessings, and of course we can we end. You must be exhausted by that time of day. No, but I'm elevated. Good, I'm elevated. good. It I energizes feel inspired. You. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So tell us very quickly because we don't have much time. I a just want to sing for you the, the beginning of Nila before there is a Kaddish. Mm -hmm. And the melody or the nusach, the, 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 the musical mode by which we have to chant is unique. And uh, there are many songs that have been composed. His gadal veis kadash shemei rabo. This Kaddish, this melody, if it doesn't get to you, if it doesn't create something in you for tshuva, for repentance, because this is the last chance, the last chance, right. this, is, this melody has to do it. Well, I'm sure in your synagogue it does it. I have no I question hope so, about it. I hope so. I hope so. I <laughs> and try all I can hard. say is that uh, the Mispalim, the people who come to your synagogue, are very fortunate to have a cantor like yourself. And I only wish you, Thank you. much success in your work and to continue to inspire Jewish people to lift up their hearts to try to come closer to God. Thank you, and Thank I you wish everybody gmar uh, chatima tova. Thank you very much. We should all be inscribed Thank for a good much. and healthy year. Thank you very much for being with us and for our audience. I just want to say that go out there, prepare for Yom Kippur, do everything you can. Go to your fellow human being that you might have wronged. Ask for forgiveness and ask for forgiveness from God. Go into Yom Kippur and get the most out of it. There are treasures, treasures of blessings and good things to be taken. And pray and sing, pray and sing. Good. Shalom and take care. Sim, Hasagi, you know, in a name of Shiaho.